Hello and welcome to the 2023 Topkey.com Awards. It's that time of year when we name the greatest new cars launched in the last 12 months and then make up a load of award names to celebrate their particular area of greatness. Like our first award of the night, which goes to Disruptor of the Year. And this car, well, it takes wedgy and edgy to a whole new level. It is, of course, the new Tesla Cybertruck, Elon Musk's stainless steel cyberpunk fantasy. If we're honest, it's a car we didn't think was ever going to make production, but hey, what do we know? Because they've done it and they even invited us out to Los Angeles to have a go. Now, because of pesky embargoes, we can't show you a clip of that film right now, but subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to watch that film in about 24 hours. Next up, it's Manufacturer of the Year, and the winner is the company that probably made most of us fall in love with supercars in the first place. It is Lamborghini, and what a year it's had. They've launched this thing here, the successor to the Aventador. It's called the Revuelto. It's a plug-in hybrid. It's still got a screaming V12 engine, but it's also got three electric motors for a total of a thousand horsepower, and it drives with a polish and a finesse that we're just not used to from big Lamborghinis. And then there's the insane off-road Huracan Storato. They've revealed the LMDH race car that's going to compete at Le Mans from 2024. We've had a glimpse at Lamborghini's electric future with the supercar on stilts. Lanzador concept and in 2022 they had another record year of sales. I think it's time we watch the highlight roof. This is supposed to be a big scary Lamborghini, what's going on? <laughs> I should be somewhere over that fence in the bushes over there. This is a pure electric Lamborghini. It's called the Lanzador. Lamborghini's calling it an Ultra GT. I think it works really, really well. It looks, it's different, it's exciting. Now, if I thought the track was fun, this is just on another level. Oh. So what Lamborghini's done is turn the Huracan into a rally car, which is a decision I very much approve of. Well done, Lamborghini. Moving on to luxury car of the year, a category that is ideally suited to whisper quiet and buttery smooth EVs. So when Rolls-Royce announced it was gonna make its first ever electric car, the Spectre, we expected big things, really, really big things, and they haven't dropped the ball. In fact, deputy editor Ollie Q stuck his neck out and called this the finest motor car in the world. And here is Mr. Q getting a little bit frothy and excited when he drove one of these in California. I was cynical before I drove this car. I thought, oh no, what if going electric has cheapened the Rolls-Royce experience? What if now I've no longer got 12 cylinders bouncing up and down in front of me in perfect harmony? But you know what? I knew electric would suit Rolls-Royce, but I think they've done the impossible here. I think electric, more than any other car, has made Rolls-Royce better. From extreme luxury to extremely cheap, our next award is for bargain of the year, and the winner is, surprise, surprise, those lords of low prices, Dacia. But this thing, the spring, is a little bit different because it is a pure electric Dacia, and electric cars tend to be expensive, don't they? But not this one. When it goes on sale in the UK early next year, it's gonna cost from well under 20,000 pounds. You wanna know numbers, don't you? 
top speed, 78 miles an hour. It will do 0 to 62 in under 14 seconds and has a range of about 150 miles. And this, yeah, that's the, that's the high performance version as well. So quick, this car is not, but you can't argue with value like that. Next, it's our All The Car You Ever Need Award. And it goes to this, the brilliant BMW M3 Touring. It can do long distances. It can swallow the entire family and all their stuff. It's rapid in all conditions because it's got switchable four wheel drive. And best of all, it's still a hooligan at heart. So you can take it to a racetrack and spend all day incinerating all four tires. It's a fast car that you can actually justify buying. Why on earth BMW took this long to make one? I'm not entirely sure. We're just happy it exists. You get one of these things on the right road, it will still widen your eyes and make the hairs on the back of your hand stand up. It is still, despite the weight and the stupid technology and everything I've just said, it's still just really thrilling to drive. And this touring with X Drive, it just feels like a complete package. To be completely honest with you right now, no, I'm not missing the manual. No, I'm not finding the gear shifts a bit of a pain. And I'm finding it more trustworthy than the last generation of M3, which could get really vindictive at times. It feels like they've answered the criticisms of that car and then just given it the most desirable package impossible. The winner of our next award, Hypercar of the Year, might not be a hypercar at all. Bear with me on this one. It's only got 654 horsepower. The styling isn't particularly outlandish. It's got plenty of seats. It's got lots of storage. It's this, the T50. And it's not for show-offs because everything about this car is designed to enhance the driving experience. It's why it weighs less than a ton. It's why its footprint on the road is the same as a Porsche Boxster. It's why it's got a sensational Cosworth 4-litre naturally aspirated V12 that revs to over 12,000 RPM. It's why it's got a central driving position and a manual gearbox. It's called the Gordon Murray Automotive T50, but you might know it as the successor to arguably the greatest car ever made, the McLaren F1. And I know that this thing is better in almost every single way than the F1 because only Top Gear has driven this car. I say Top Gear, it was actually Ollie Marriage that had a go. So here's Ollie driving the T50, probably looking quite smug. Spine dingling, isn't it? And in all likelihood, it will be the last, the last great analog supercar we will ever see. And if it is, we can at least say we went out on a high. Because, oh my God, it is sublime. So just sit back and listen to it. Moving on to design of the year. Now, when you think about design, you probably think of Aston Martins, Alfa Romeos, Italian coach-built specials, not the Toyota Land Cruiser, a car built to be tough above all else and last forever. So imagine our surprise when Toyota revealed the new Land Cruiser and it was the best thing we'd seen all year. So we sent Tom Ford to meet it to check our eyes weren't playing tricks. Land Rover Defender or Ineos Grenadier? Nah. If you want a proper 4x4 with a touch of luxury, then there's a new king in town. And it's this, the Toyota Land Cruiser 250. This is a design that honors the Land Cruiser badge, but brings it bang up to date. The king is dead. 
Long live the king. Next up, it's GT of the year. Now, we all know that nobody does a front-engine GT quite like Aston Martin, but recent offerings have been a bit meh. This new DB12, though, is here to set things straight because while it doesn't totally reinvent the formula, it does sharpen things up. It's got a Rorty V8 engine, a better chassis, a better interior, and it looks better too. So when Oli Maris drove it in the south of France, he called it the most accomplished Aston I've ever driven. Once you're above 3,000, it really delivers quickly, immediately. There's no lag in it, and it hits hard. It hits supercar hard. I mean, it's a little bit heavier, but it does, does what it needs to do. It's the traction and the way out the corner and the confidence which just feels a new level for a DB12, for a DB car. Yeah, it charges on well. Next award is Family Car of the Year, and it goes to this, the new all-electric seven-seat Kia EV9. Now, admittedly, this will work best if you've got a large family and also a large wallet, because this starts from £65,000, which is pretty fresh territory for Kia, but doesn't it wear its premiumness well? This is a really good looking car. It's got space to spare. It's got a proper 300 mile range and all the tech that you could need. Every single year, we're amazed and surprised by how far the Korean manufacturers have come. And every year they bring along something even newer and even more accomplished. Here's Oli Q getting to grips with this thing in Ibiza. the EV9 like? Well, mainly big, enormous. This feels huge. There's a lot of metal around you. The bonnet line is very high. It's funny because you don't really have a massively commanding high up Range Rover or G-Wagon style driving position, but just because of how huge it feels, you don't feel like a motorist. You feel like a captain or an admiral. Ahoy there. Moving on to our performance car of the year, and it goes to this, the Honda Civic Type R. Now, the justification for this one is pretty simple. At our Speed Week test in Sweden a few months back, this thing came, it saw, and it conquered because nothing, and I mean nothing, had the all-round brilliance of this on road and on track. Now, admittedly, 50 grand is a fair bit of wedge for this thing, but hey, You've got a touring car when you want one, and then it can chill out and do the everyday hatchback thing when you want that. Oh, and it's got a manual gearbox and some of the best seats ever fitted to a road car. We need to bask in this car's magnificence while we still can. Next up, it's the car we're most looking forward to driving in 2024. And the winner of this is something we didn't see coming at all. Ford makes a Mustang that's a genuine rival to the 911 GT3 RS. We're talking, of course, about the Mustang GTD, which is so bonkers that it's brilliant. I still can't believe the tech spec is true, actually. Over 800 horsepower from a supercharged V8, a genuine DRS rear wing. We've got magnesium, carbon fiber, titanium, absolutely everywhere, and a target of a sub seven minute lap of the Nürburgring. Oh, and a price tag, $300,000 for a Mustang. Yeah, I said we were looking forward to driving it, not buying it. Next up is our Innovation Award, and for this one, we need to delve into the mind of Christian von Koenigsegg, which is where you're gonna find, well, many things, but mostly unique engineering solutions for making his cars faster and lighter and more engaging, and this latest invention is absolute genius. It's a simulated manual gearbox for his Yesco-based, retro-inspired CC850 hypercar. It's basically a series of actuators and very clever software that turns a nine-speed automatic gearbox into a six-speed manual, and it works. I know this because I've actually had a go. Christian, thank you for not just dreaming it, but making it happen too. Maybe some 
ropes. Start from the beginning. So the, this the the light speed transmission. Yes. So the, that we introduced for the Yesco. So mm -hmm. it's uh, our novel uh, complete retake on a, on a fast shifting paddle shift gearbox, mm -hmm. uh, where we managed to remove a lot of components by compounding gears. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's kind of like a derailing mechanism on a bike that you take one gear times another and get the total. Mm -hmm. So it's three times three gears, creating nine gear ratios. Mm -hmm instead of having nine gears or eight gears. Mm. So it's the weight and size of a six speed, but you get nine gears out of it. This mm -hmm. is just something different and unique and exhilarating beyond anything I've experienced. Next up, it's our Eco Warrior of the Year, and it goes to this, the Volvo EX30. And not just because it's a small, semi-affordable electric car, but because Volvo has worked tirelessly to reduce this car's CO2 footprint at every opportunity. For example, it uses 25% recycled aluminium and 17% recycled steel and plastic. And you can spec it with floor mats made from recycled plastic bottles, which is a nice sound bite, isn't it? But what does it all mean? Well, apparently, if you take the CO2 emitted from building this car and then driving it for 120,000 miles, it will emit less than 30 tonnes of CO2. Now that's 25% better than an XC40 electric and better than any petrol car on the planet, even a really efficient one, says Volvo. It's not glamorous, is it? But it's the stuff that matters. Moving on to something we didn't know we needed in our lives, but now we very much do. The winner of our Retro Hero of the Year award is this, the little car company's Tamiya Wild One Max. Now, this is a company normally known for shrinking down classics like the Aston Martin DB5 and the Bugatti Type 35, but this time they've gone the other way. They've taken an iconic radio controlled car from the 80s and scaled it up to big kid size. And here's Jason Barlow doing his best Ray Lynch impression on a muddy rally course in Oxfordshire. Absolutely livid! My foot is just mashed to the floor. <laughs> Dear me! It doesn't take long to learn the track or the Wild One Max. It's basically pretty friendly. Flick the power button on, engage F, and off you go. Couldn't be easier. Fully let through there. Little flick right there we go. Well, this is like no electric car I've ever driven, I can tell you. Okay, that's probably enough of that. Moving on to our next award, which is Track Car of the Year. And it goes to this, the Porsche 911 GT3 RS. Now, yes, this thing finished behind the Honda Civic Type R in our Speed Week test, but only because, for obvious reasons, it can't offer the same rounded experience on road and track, but focus in on that track bit and oh my word, this thing makes gods out of mere mortals. It grips, unlike any car I've ever driven in my life. It's basically a full-on race car, but with aircon and a stereo. And the best bit is it's only got, I say only, 518 brake horsepower, proof that power isn't the only crucial ingredient when it comes to face bending performance. And then we arrive at the big one, the TopGear.com Car of the Year 2023, and the winner is a beacon of hope for all our futures. Yeah, I'm talking about this, the Hyundai Ioniq 5N. Now, electric performance cars have been obscenely rapid in a straight line for quite a while now, but always lacking a bit in emotion and connection to the human behind the wheel. Well, this thing throws the kitchen sink at driver engagement and it does it all through clever electronics. So you've got a simulated paddle shift gearbox, you've got fake 
clutch kicks, you've got drift modes, you've got a variety of simulated engine noises, and it backs it all up with four wheel drive and 641 horsepower. And now I know that that sounds horribly fake, but you gotta believe me, it works, and it works brilliantly. For me, what this car proves is that our electric future has plenty of twists and surprises up its sleeve. Let's take a look at it in action. With an electric car, you just get all the torque, a flat line of acceleration all the way through, but this actively interrupts it. Why? To make it feel like a combustion engine car, to give you more to do. And I have to say, straight away, it's way better than I thought it would be. Way better. Great job, Hyundai. Really good. The Hyundai Endivision, hats off. This is something completely different something completely new and you've pulled it out of the bag again. So that's it for another topgear.com awards. Big up Hyundai and all our fantastic winners tonight. Head to topgear.com for loads more information on all of them. Make sure you pick up a copy of the magazine, the special awards issue. Listen to the Top Gear magazine podcast and watch videos until your eyeballs drop out on the YouTube channel. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs>